When we're talking intent with weave poles, intent is doesn't mean you have to drive right up to them and show them six inches before the weave poles. All you're doing is showing your body language that that is where I want you to go. Go now and go with drive. So ideally when your dog is heading to the weave poles, they're going to head with confidence right to it and only collect their body what they need to do to get into the weave poles. We're going to see here with Pig, who is a terrier and makes me work just as much as I want her to work, I think we're going to be able to really see the difference of when I don't show intent through the whole entire weave poles through when I do show intent. We've all seen the handlers that cautiously walk through the weave poles, hoping their dog will finish it. But what that's going to do is really slow the dog down, just like if we were going on a walk. Okay, they're going to go slower. So if we're walking through the weave poles, how are they going to have their speed and rhythm and their little dance to finish the weave poles confidently? Think about the same thing when we do our contacts. Our dogs, when we learn, when we teach them nice and slow at the beginning, they're walking through it. We, they get their contacts every time. Okay, same thing with the weave poles. Once we add the speed, you're not helping. Once we add the speed through the A-frame, now that they're in a, a, a trial, now maybe they can't hit their contact performance because we didn't train that from the beginning. So we want to teach speed and intent with all of, our con all of our obstacles from the beginning so that they learn from the beginning how to do the weaves comfortably and quickly and never do it slow. So we're going to time her and see the difference from when I am showing intent the whole time and when I'm just kind of walking with her. So I'm trying to be boring here, and she gives me a time of 3.44. I'm definitely showing more enthusiasm. She's weaving better at the time of 3.13. I'm really pushing her on this one, but she stammers right there, and it's still 3.28. We're back to boring, and she gets a little mad. She decides to stick this one out with the time again of 3.40. Alright, we're doing some distance with this one. She's still very enthusiastic and a fast time of 3.19. Alright, now we'll watch my Border Collie do it. Try to be slower and boring. Time of 2.84. Here he's going faster. 2.53. Same thing, I'm getting right in there, getting them all excited. 2.57, just about the same. Try to go back to boring. This is hard for me. Definitely slower at 2.71. And again, intent, but at a distance. 2.63. It's important to note here that it doesn't matter if I'm driving from a head, behind, or 20 feet laterally. I have always taught them with drive and enthusiasm so they have no hesitation on the weave poles no matter where I'm at and what I'm doing. So I think it was obvious how Joker weaved, whether I was showing intent or not. His stride changed a couple of times. He went to this stride once in between when I wasn't with him and I didn't say anything and I was just walking next to him, which he hasn't seen. But, let me ask you, which weave poles did he look happier doing? The second question is, if I would have trained the weave poles without intent from the beginning, how do you think his overall weave pole performance would be? Do you think he would be winning 30 weave pole incredible dog challenges? So that's my point also with the contacts. Very important when your dog has learned the contacts, maybe around a year, 14 months, 16 months, you're putting that drive and intent and enthusiasm to get down there. Same thing with the weave poles. You're putting that enthusiasm from the beginning. I see too often students at that age be even more cautious because their dog's just learning how to do the weaves and they're not trusting, the dog's not confident because the handler's acting weird, the, weird dog's, the handler's acting weird because they're not trusting the dog's weave poles and it's a vicious cycle. 
Of course, weed poles being how physically demanding they are, you don't really want to do this until that your dog's old enough. One, because of their bones and their growth plates, but two, their bodies and mine need to be full maturity. Pig's a great example. I taught her weed poles when she was probably 14, 15 months, um, and she was doing them great, and then around 20, 22 months, being a staffy, her chest really dropped, and her weed pole dance changed. So I kind of had to reteach it. I'm not saying most dogs have to go through that, but because she was a staffy and her body's big, she took a little more time to grow up. Hope you learned a little something from this. And go out there and drive a little more. Oh yeah. He's like, um, <laughs> yeah. Let's look at the average of all the runs. When I ran Pokey with intent, hers was 3.20. And when I ran kind of boring, it was 3.42. Remember, my dogs are used to seeing me with enthusiasm and drive while they weave. So they're not really sure what's going on, but there's still a big difference. Joker ran it in 2.57 when I was showing a tent. And otherwise, he was 2.81.